The reason I've asked that we sing these Jewish songs is because, first of all, they have a dear place in my heart. We never need to forget, we never need to forget that the early church was a Jewish church. We never need to forget that our Bible is written under the Jewish culture and Jewish history. Yes. Can I hear an amen? Amen, sir. The Lord has really impressed on me to bring a message, and I'm not really sure how it's going to come out because I'm going to be led of the Spirit this morning. I trust that, that you flow with me this morning yes. on the theme, bringing the ark back. Oh, yes. Bringing the ark back. We sang about the ark and, and, and the holy of holies. How many of you know the holy of holies was, is where the ark of the covenant was in the temple? <clears throat> How many of you know that the ark of the, the, ark of the covenant was the place that was, represented the glory and the presence and the power of God? Amen? The ark of the covenant was where the cherubims would sit and, and, and the... Uh, the angels of the Lord would minister and the high priest would go in once a year uh, to take the sins of the people of Israel and they could move their sins up uh, till the next year. But how many of you uh, know that when Jesus died on the cross, the veil was rent from top to bottom and now we can come boldly into the throne room of grace to find mercy in times of need. Hallelujah. The Ark of the Covenant we know is a symbol of in the Old Testament to represent the ark of Jesus that we're in today. Amen? We have the glory, the presence, and the power through Jesus Christ, our ark of safety. But I want you to know in, in Scripture, and if, if you'll turn with me to 2 Samuel chapter 6, there's an account here that David had the right heart, but he didn't follow the right instructions. How many of you know you can have the right heart and still lose out on God's best? How many of you know that the road to hell is paved with good intentions? Paved with good intentions. Well, I felt that that was the right thing to do. Well, I thought that uh, that was the right philosophy. Well, I thought that that was the right belief. How many of you know there's people caught up in all kind of false religions today uh, that are uh, that, that they have the right intentions, but they got the wrong philosophy. Is anybody with me this morning? We're going to look at a few moments on the theme, bringing the ark back. The ark of the covenant, by the way, was gone for 20 years from the tabernacle of Moses. The ark was taken captive by the Philistines during the battle that they had with Israel. And they had captured the Ark of the Covenant in their defeat over Israel. The Ark of the Covenant, God spoke when he gave the instructions of the Ark to Moses, certain ways that they should handle the Ark, certain ways that they ought to honor and respect the Ark, just any old buddy shouldn't carry the Ark, amen? Amen. Why? Because the ark was more uh, than, a, uh, than a wooden case that was covered with gold. It had two golden uh, 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 angels mounted on the top, and it was more uh, than that. It represented the glory, the presence, and the power of God. And when we come into the glory and the presence and the power of God, we need to know it's an awesome, awesome place to be. Isaiah 6, in the year the king Uzziah died, I saw the Lord, Isaiah said. His train filled the temple. The glory of God filled uh, the, 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 the temple of God. Isaiah felt and saw the glory, the power, and the presence of God. David's heart was right. David has a, had a heart pure after God. I love David because David, I can identify with David in so many ways in our own life. How many of you appreciate David? He made a lot of mistakes, but he was a man after God's own heart. There was times that David actually blew it, but he still had a heart after God. David's the one that cried out in Isaiah 51, Oh God, create in me a clean heart. Restore within me the joy of my salvation. Take not your Holy Spirit from me. It was David. After the Ark of the Covenant was under the, under the control of the Philistines and had been captured, 
in battle against Israel, they carried it uh, to Ashdod, where the, the Philistines suffered because they had, they had the possession of the ark of God. They were ungodly Philistines. And after they suffered a while in Ashdod, having the Ark of the Covenant, the Philistines then took the Ark to a place called Gath. Gath was the second location that they put the Ark. They said, well, maybe it'll be okay here. And, and, and because uh, they were ungodly Philistines, heathens, uh, they had the Ark of God. There was much persecution that, that rested upon them. And they said, we must move uh, this Ark again. So they moved it to a place called Akron. It was first in Ashdod, then it was in Gath, then it went to Ekron. And they moved it there, but the same consequences took place where the Ark of the Covenant was under the control of the Philistines. There was always havoc and there was always problems that came and the, that they wanted this Ark moved. And so after uh, it was causing trouble in Ekron, they moved the Ark to a place called Beth Shemesh. And they experienced the anger of the Lord because they had the Ark of the Covenant. And so they moved it from there. This is the fifth place that they moved it to. They moved it uh, to Abinadad's house. And Abinadad kept the Ark until David decided to go and bring the Ark back. But David wasn't going to bring the Ark back to the tabernacle of Moses where it was originally placed. David said, I'm going to build a tabernacle of David. And David went and he built a tent and he structured a tent to bring the ark back. And it's interesting because whenever it left the tabernacle of Moses, Ichabod was written over the door. Ichabod means the glory has departed. Sadly enough, there's churches all over our nation today that come in, they have services, they sing their songs, they go through the ritual, but Ichabod's been written over the door because the glory has departed. When we want to set up our structure our way, when we want to do it our way, when we think we got the answer beyond what God wants to do, when we exclude the anointing and the presence of God and pretty soon we're just going through rituals, Ichabod is over the door. I know churches that Ichabod has been written over the door for 20 years and they're still going through the motions. Is anybody with me? But David decided he was going to bring the ark back. And if you'll look with me in 2 Samuel chapter 6, it said, again, David gathered all the choice men of Israel, actually 30,000 of them. How many of you know 30,000 people can, men can do a lot? His intent was to get, the, uh, to, to get the best men he had out of the 12 tribes of Israel and go back and bring the ark back. The Philistines didn't want the ark anymore, so they put it on a new ox cart drawn by an ox, and they, and, and they sent the ox out towards Israel's uh, uh, territory and they thought well, that, well if the ark would go if the, if the oxen would go uh, towards the Israelites they would see it and they would have, recover their, uh, their ark of the covenant which has caused so much havoc for us for 20 years so David was determined to bring the ark back but he wasn't going to bring it back to the tabernacle of Moses he was going to bring it back to the tabernacle of David the tabernacle of David represents uh, the anointing of God that we have today a lot of the old rituals that they, uh, that they uh, went through didn't operate in the tabernacle of David. Uh, David brought the ark back that they could praise and worship him in the spirit of holiness and anointing and not take it back to where Ichabod was written over the door. In verse 3 it says, So, so they set the ark of God on a new cart and they brought it out to the house of Abinadad. And Uzzah drove the new cart, it says in verse 3. And in verse 5, it says, Then David, we're in 2 Samuel chapter 6 and verse 5. And then David and all the house of Israel played music before the Lord on all kinds of instruments, of fir wood and of harps and of stringed instruments and of tambourines and of sistrums and of cymbals. Uh, they were praising God and singing and magnifying the Lord. How many of you know uh, you, can do, uh, you can do a good thing sometimes and do it the wrong way? We have to be careful that, uh, that we don't uh, think that because, uh, because we have a certain 
uh, mindset on how music should be or how we ought to uh, worship God or how we ought to, uh, how we ought to minister to him uh, that we think we can do it any old way and it's okay. God has a standard and he does everything decently and in order. And so David and all the house of Israel were praising him, playing instruments and singing and magnifying the Lord and, and, and playing the, the stringed instruments, the guitars and the cymbals and the, and, and, and the high sounding cymbals. They was having a great time in the Lord. Remember now the Ark of the Covenant is, is sitting on a cart, an ox cart, drawn by an ox. And they're trying to take it back to Israel and then they was going to take it to the tabernacle of David and here's what happened. And when they came uh, to the threshing floor of Uzzah, they put out, Uzzah put out his hands uh, to the ark of God and they took hold of it and then the oxen stumbled. Then the anger of the Lord was raised against Uzzah and God struck him dead. It seemed like they were doing the right thing. It seemed like everything was, uh, was right. After all, uh, they had the heart of God. Uh, David wanted to bring the ark back. He wanted to bring the ark of the covenant back to his people. They was going to put it back in the tabernacle of David. They was going to magnify and worship God. The only thing is, you got to do it God's way. And church, I believe we're living in a society where the church is accepting so many things that the world has to offer and we are accepting so many things that seem right and look right and act right, but when it's not right, the anointing's not there. And we think we can just, we think we can compromise with the world system and bring a little bit of the world in and let the world, uh, bring a little bit of the world's attitude and bring a little bit of the world's music and, and, and mix it all up and it's going to be okay. After all, God is, is, is liberal enough to accept that. But let me tell you, God has his way of operating. He's got his way of magnifying him. He's got his way of handling the power and the presence and the glory. And we must realize that it's got to be God's way. Hallelujah. I believe we need to realize the fact that God still is God and he's still on the throne. And we're not gonna water down what he does and we're not gonna mix it with the world and we're not gonna make it seem right and act right, but it's either, it's either right or it's not right. And when David came and handled the ark uh, like he thought he should do it, when he handled the ark like his mindset thought, well, like his mindset would have thought it would be okay. After all, let's build an ark. Let's put the ark of the covenant on the ark. Uh, let's uh, let's be pulled by uh, oxen, and we'll get it where it needs to be. It made God very angry. The anger of the Lord was rose against Uzzah, and God struck him. Therefore, his error, and he died there by the ark of God. It says in verse five, but David became angry because of the Lord's outbreak against Uzzah. David became angry about it. Aren't you glad that God will allow us to be angry with him sometimes and not just wipe us out? You ever had, a, is, is anybody here other than me ever had an attitude at times uh, against God? You know, everything just didn't seem to come right. And you couldn't understand it. And you, you almost got, he almost got put out with God. God, why did you do that? Has anybody other than me ever... Well, thank you for all you honest folks that raised your hand. Rest of you, come to the altar, please. <laughs> We're going to pray over you. But I want you to know it's, it's the power of God. It's the living word made alive by our spirit. It's God's anointing that we need to tap into. We need to realize it's not man's way. It's God's way that's going to get it done. It's God's way that's going to make a difference in our life. God is the one that I seek. I said, what should I minister on? And, and the Spirit of the Lord said, minister out of your heart on the word of God. Those things that will change lives. We need a, a word that will change our lives today. And we need a word to line us up with the anointing and the presence and the power of God. And we need a word that will touch our heart and know that God loves us so much that he's going to be there no matter what. But we still have to do it right. And I believe David made a lot of preparation to move this ark. I don't think he was haphazard. I don't think he said one day, let's go get an ark. Uh, let's go get a, a, an ox cart and move the ark. No, I think he, he, he uh, thought it through and he, he, he gave it his best and he really thought he was doing the right thing. Many times we'll think we're doing the right thing when we're not doing it right. And the reason why is because of the fact that a lot of times we don't search the scriptures and find out how to handle something. Are you with me? 
This verse 8 says, And David became angry because God's outbreak against Uzzah. Uzzah should have known better. Uzzah should have realized it. Because it said over in verse 3, so they set the ark of God on a new cart. This was, uh, this was before they ever tried to uh, transport it. And it was over at uh, Abinadad's, uh, which was on the hill. And Uzzah uh, was the son of Abinadad, and he drove the new cart. He should have known already by the way, the, the way it operated in, in the Philistine camp uh, that you don't, handle the ark of, you don't handle the ark of God on an ox cart. You don't handle the ark of God like men would handle it. You don't handle the glory and the presence of power of God in a haphazard manner. It has to be handled according to the word of God. We want the glory in the church and we want people to be healed and we want the presence of God to flow. Let, let me tell you, church, that sometimes uh, we expect God just to respond to the way we want him to respond. We come when we feel like it and we tip our hat when we feel like it and, and, and if things are going on in the house, we're not there. It's okay, God doesn't mind. And we wonder why sometimes uh, that we're not getting the full benefit out of the anointing and the presence and the power of God. But God wants us to flow in his word. Hallelujah. We need to understand the Holy Spirit should be our guide into the places of the spiritual. They tried to handle it in the natural. But we can't do things in the natural and expect the supernatural to flow. Is somebody with me? Now, David was a man after God's heart. I love David. I'm not going to fault David because he made this error. But it costs him something. It costs the life of one of his main men. It costs him uh, to, uh, to have to put the Ark of the Covenant over at Ebed, Ebed Eden's house for three months while David went back. And for those three months, I believe he went back and searched the scriptures. I believe he went back and spent time in prayer. I believe David went back and isolated himself and got in a secret place and says, oh God, oh Lord, I want to do this and, and I thought I was doing it right, but what have I done, God? What have I done that's unpleasing to you? And I believe God revealed to him that I spoke to my servant Moses and told Moses the only way the ark will be handled is by the staffs going through the side handles of the ark and it'll be carried on the shoulders of the Levites. And just any old people is not going to carry the ark. You're not going to carry my glory and presence on something uh, that represents uh, the, uh, the, the, uh, the labors of the world, which was an ox and an ox cart. He said, I believe he spoke to David and said, if you're going to handle my glory, it's going to have to be handled according to my word. And church, I believe there's so many times that we want something done and we want God to move and we pray for our loved ones to be saved and we ask God to move mightily in our life, but many times we're not lined up with the word of God and we wonder why we don't get results. I believe God wants us to recognize that his word is the answer to every situation. I appreciate all the, all the things that, uh, that has happened in these last few days and I think every one of us was probably glued to the television and the radio with all this stuff uh, that, took, uh, that took place in Boston. But I, I want you to know what disappointed me just a little bit at the end when they all cheered uh, for all the, uh, all the people that did an excellent job and, and, and all, the, all the policemen and all those that worked so diligently hour after hour. But I didn't hear anybody say we're going to give God the glory because he watched over and he took care amen there comes a time we just have to give God glory we have to give him praise when it's all said and done it's his hand that moves it's his mighty hand that touches down and says yes I'm going to protect my people and I think maybe we ought to give a little more credence and a little more a little more presence to the mighty God that we serve let me tell you something about David David was a Worshipper. David knew how to worship God. That's the reason he had all the instruments out there. That's the reason he had all those that could play. He had them out there and they were worshiping God. He knew that worship was the right thing. He knew that giving God the glory was the key to victory. And he, he was a praiser and a worshiper. He wrote most of the psalms that we read in the, in the psalms. And, 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 he, and he worshiped God. But it says in verse 9, David was afraid of the Lord that day. 
And he said, how can the ark of the Lord come, come to me then? How can I bring the ark back to Israel? How can I take this ark of the covenant and bring it back if we're afraid to handle it? And that's the reason why David had to spend some time in God's presence to find out what was the right way to do it. Church, there's times that we need to get on our prayer bones and we need to spend time in the presence of God. Say, God, really, what do you want? What do you want in my life? What do you want me to do? How do you want me to handle this situation? How am I going to handle uh, this situation with, uh, with uh, people in our life that uh, it seems like uh, there's discord and it seems like uh, there's opposition? Oh, God, help me. And if we'll line up with God's word, we'll find out that God will bring it to pass and they'll bring it to pass his way. It said the ark of the Lord in verse 11 remained in the house of Obed-Eden three months and the Lord blessed Obed-Eden and all of his household. I'll tell you, when you got the presence of God in your house, you're going to get blessed. <laughs> when you lift up Jesus and you, and you let the glory and the presence and the power of God reign in your house, you're going to find you'll be blessed coming in, you'll be blessed going out. You'll be blessed in the city and you'll be blessed in the country. And all that you have lay your hands to shall be blessed. And we can be a blessed people if we let the glory and the presence and the power reign in our house. And the reason why sometimes a lot of homes are not blessed is because we have too many other things in the home that's driving out God's presence and glory and power. God's not going to compete with some of the things that comes on television today. God's not going to compete with some of our attitudes that we have in our homes. God's not going to compete with some of the arguing and some of the disagreements and some of the things that happen in the homes today. God's going to say, that's okay. If you want to do that, that's all right, but my glory can't reign there. Is anybody with me tonight, this morning? The glory of the, God, of the Lord, the presence and the power of God will reign if we'll say, oh, Lord, I want to do it your way. I want to operate my home your way. I want your power and presence to be manifested. And the Lord blessed Obed-Eden and all of his household. I believe it's important today for us to be blessed. I believe it's important for us to have the glory of God reigning in our homes and, and reigning in our lives personally and making sure that we come to the house of God and our heart is where he wants it to be. And when we start to worship and praise him, uh, we lift up the glory of God together like a mighty cloud and the presence of God will fill the house. Hallelujah. Let me tell you some, a couple things about David. First of all, he was a shepherd. That's what he was called to do. He came, he, he was a son of the, of, of the son of Jesse in the household of Jesse. And, and he, was one, he was the younger son that went out and, and took care of the sheep. He understood the sheep. He understood the shepherd. And not only that, but the Bible says he was a servant. David knew how to serve. David knew how to humble himself. He knew how to humble himself before Saul and he learned how to humble himself before the Lord. And then David was a leader. David was a good leader. He didn't only lead 600 mighty men that followed him because they recognized his leadership. Not only did he lead his, his troops uh, away from the danger of Saul chasing him uh, from one uh, cave to the other, but then when David moved into the place of being a king, he knew how to lead the people. And then, and then David was the man of the word. You could tell by the way he talked to God in the Psalms, how he wrote the Psalms and sang the songs of, of victory to the Lord and, 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 and many of the battles that he went through, many of the things that took place in David's life, he wrote the Psalms over those different situations. You could almost, you could almost read the Psalm and say, oh, I know where that came from. We know the story where David was in Ziglag and he came back from the camp and the camp was burnt to the ground and all the women and children were taken captive. His own men threatened to kill him and the Bible says David strengthened himself in the Lord. But he writes about it in Psalms 27. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Whom shall I be afraid? Even though the wicked one might come to eat up my flesh, he'll stumble and fall. Though a host may encamp against me, I shall not fear. One thing that I've desired the Lord that I've asked him that I would dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. I will sing praises, yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. 
David wrote that because of the experience that he had in Ziglag. Is anybody with me? He was a man of the word. And David was a man who says, who said this, search me, O Lord. Know my heart, O Lord, and see if there is any wicked way within me. Sometimes we need to cry out that, that, uh, that psalm. We need to say, Lord, search me. Lord, know my heart. See if there's any wicked way within me. Oh, God, let your ways be my ways. Wicked way, this word wicked way, if you search it out, you'll find out it talks about sinister things. It talks about warped thinking, distorted thinking, a betrayer. One is underhanded, out of alignment. Oh, listen, we know that there's people like that in the world today. We know there's people that are betrayers and, and, and underhanded and, and they'll hurt you in a heartbeat and they'll betray you if you put your trust in them and they're, under, and, and, and they're sinister people. But I want you to know that we can't let those kind of people stop us from being all that God wants us to be. I'm determined to be what God wants me to be. I'm determined to be lined up with his word. I'm saying, Lord God, whatever it takes, search my heart, oh God. Search me and you know me and see if there's any wicked way within me. God's looking for the heart that transforms into his presence. I says God's looking for a heart that will transform into his presence. I like what uh, David said in, in Romans 12, 1. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, to make your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is only my reasonable service that I might serve him. And then verse 2 says, by the renewing of our minds. So we're constantly always, this should be renewing in, on our mind. How do we renew our mind? And not by the things of the world. Not by the things that we hear out in the street, but we renew our mind by the power of God's word. Lord, let your word come alive within me. Thy word have I hid in my heart, the psalmist said, that I might not sin against thee. And then the Lord blessed the house. In verse 12, the Lord blessed the house of Obed-Eden. So David went and he brought up the ark of God from the house of Obed-Eden to the city of David with gladness. How many of you know when you make a mistake, it's time to repent. And after you repent and the glory of God starts to flow in your life again, it's time to be glad and rejoice. I'm glad we sang those exciting rejoicing songs before I preached. You know why? Because we had the time of hearing God's voice. We had a word from the Lord. We worshiped him from the depths of our heart. And then when his presence came in, it's okay to rejoice with a song of victory and a heart that's glad and the joy of the Lord be in our strength. It always thrills me when I see you get out and dance on the floor. I think it thrills God to see his children get out and dance and, and worship him and come before his presence in thanksgiving. Because what we're doing is we're saying, oh, Lord, I thank you. I'm dancing before you because I have your joy. I'm dancing before you because I know who you are. The gladness of the Lord's in my heart. Thank you, Lord, for the victory I have today. So David went out and he brought the ark. What did he do? Three, listen, three months the ark was in Obed-Eden's house. While Obed-Eden's getting, getting blessed because he got the presence and the power of God, David seeking the Lord in prayer saying, oh God, how can I handle? First of all, David had to repent for being angry with God. Has anybody here ever had to repent and say, God, I'm sorry I was angry with you? And Lord, I don't understand why that took place. I don't understand how come this happened to my family. How could this happen to me? I, didn't th I, I know about other people, but I didn't think it would happen to me. When my whole life fell apart, I, 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 I literally, I was serving God and I was doing praise and worship and I was going to nursing homes and every place I could go uh, to sing with my pastor. We was preaching and things just fell apart. My, uh, my whole life came apart. And I said, God, how could you let this happen? I'm glad God didn't strike me dead. I'm glad God, God didn't zap me with a, with a lightning bolt. I'm glad he loves me that much to say, well, you silly, silly boy, just keep on getting angry and you'll get over it. Sure enough, I got over it. 
I cried out to the Lord, and guess what? He was there. And I believe David spent three months crying out to the Lord. Says, God, I got a, had, a, had a bad attitude about us getting killed, and I don't understand why you struck him down. But now that I searched the scriptures, I know why you struck him down because we was handling your glory and your presence in the natural way, and you'll always operate in the supernatural. And Lord, we was handling your presence and your power with an ox cart pulled by an ox uh, when it should have been carried by the righteous men uh, of the Levites uh, with, with, uh, with uh, uh, stays that are through both sides and holding that up ark off the ground and not letting it get in a, in a position uh, that, it would, that it would fall. So David would seek the Lord and pray and fast and I believe God gave him a word and he said, David, here's how you handle that ark. First of all, get the Levites and put it on sticks on both sides and carry that ark on their shoulders. And you just don't let anybody touch the ark. Uzzah wasn't a, a, a Levite. He wasn't part of the, the, the Levite tribe. The Levites would be the ones that will handle my glory, my presence, and my power because they're prayed up, because they spend time in my presence. And David found out how to handle that ark and he went back to Obed Eden's house and he brought the ark back to the city with gladness. And so it was in verse 13 when those bearing the ark of the Lord had gone six paces that he sacrificed the oxen and the fatted sheep. He didn't need an oxen anymore. He didn't need an ox cart anymore. He probably took the new ox cart that spent a lot of time building and probably put it on fire and killed the oxen and consumed it as a sacrifice with the, with the ox cart. They consumed the ox. Why? Because we don't need the natural. We don't need man's way to operate in God's power. We don't need man's way to guide and direct us because we serve a God that's bigger than anything man can make up, anything that we can try to do in the natural. We need to operate in the supernatural, in the power and the anointing of God. Then David danced before the Lord. That's the reason we, one reason I wanted to sing that song. Then David danced before the Lord. Then David danced, oh hallelujah, then David danced before the Lord. Are you with me? And he danced with all of his might. He just didn't hop around on one foot. I mean, he just really, he really got cranked up for God. He knew how to praise him. Remember, he was a harpist. Remember, he played an instrument. Remember, he was a musician all of his life. He knew the difference between the exciting music and, and, and melodical music. He knew how to worship. He knew how to praise. He was a praiser. And so David danced before the Lord. He danced with all of his might. And David was wearing a linen ephod. He took his ephod off and he started to praise God so he could be free to dance in the streets. Oh, let me tell you, when God starts to move, it's okay to get excited over him. My pastor told a story about one time there was a two, he was in a meeting and the anointing was flowing and, and, and the band was playing and, 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 and there was two ladies way in the back and one was spinning around and turning around and she'd run back and forth across the view and the other ladies should do the same thing. They were just all excited, running everywhere. And the preacher said, you, you lady back there, you stop that if you're not in the spirit. And one lady stopped and the other just kept on doing it. She kept dancing, kept singing, kept praising. And Pastor Stone was, was holding the meeting and he said, he said, and somebody came up to him after the service says, how come both of them ladies didn't stop that dancing back there? He said, because one was in the spirit and the other one wasn't. One was operating on the Holy Ghost. You see, when the Holy Ghost gets all over you, you can minister to the Lord, you can minister to the, to the people, you can go in the power and God's anointing. David danced before the Lord. He danced with all of his might. Now let me tell you something. I'm going, to, I'm going to close with this. Don't touch my anointed, God said. Don't touch my anointed. David did the right thing. He got the right orders from God. He handled the ark right. He was handling it with uh, the Levites. He was going to take it to the tabernacle of David. And, but yet his wife, Michael, Saul's daughter, she looked out through the window in verse 16 and she saw the king, her husband David, leaping and whirling around before the Lord and she was despised to her heart. 
And so she told David, how dare you be dancing before the Lord? How dare you get out there and, and take your ephod off and, 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 and you dance and you swirl around and, and you act like a regular person? You're the king. In the verse 21, it says, David said to Michael, I was before the Lord who chose me instead of your father and all of your house to appoint me ruler over this people and over Israel. Therefore, I will play music before the Lord. I will, I will be even more uh, undignified than this. And I'll be humble in my own sight. Uh, but as for my maid servants in whom you have spoken by them, I will uh, behold in honor. But the, and says, therefore, Michael, the daughter of Saul, had no children to the day of her death. Touch not God's anointed. I said, touch not God's anointed. Will the musicians come, please? Church, listen. We need to understand that there's a right way and a wrong way to, to handle God's presence. Are you with me? You want the glory to come back into the house? You want the presence of God to stay here? I believe the glory of God's in this house. I believe his presence is here. So many times I've seen the power of God and the presence of God. I've seen the healings manifested. I've seen lives get touched. We've had testimony after testimony how God has moved in this house. But I'm not going to do anything to jeopardize that. I want the glory to stay here. I want the power of God to be among you and among me. That's what the glory is all about today, his presence and his anointing. David knew some things. He knew how to, uh, how to kill a lion when he was grazing sheep. He knew how to kill a bear when a bear started to attack his flock. He knew how to kill a giant when he went after Goliath. Why? Not because of who he was, but he found victory in the God that he served. Now he wants the ark back. And he found out he had to do that right too, just like he did the lion, the bear, and the giant. The ark left because Babylon tried to take it and fought it in battle and they thought it was a good luck charm. They thought it was a rabbit foot. They, they thought it would be, it would be a, 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 something that they could use as a psychic instrument. Uh, they could just call out to the ark and they could get what they want but they didn't realize that it was not a rabbit foot. It's not a good luck, luck charm. It has nothing to do with psychics. It's the anointing and the presence and the power of God. And I pursue it, and I'm desperate for it, and I'm going to see God move in a mighty way, and I hope you have the same desire to see God's presence in this day. Church, we know what's all going around in our land. We know the pressures it seems like we're in, and the people are going through all over the country because of circumstances and the world just closing in and gripping like a vice. But I want you to know my God is bigger than all that, and he'll see you through, and he'll be there for you. And he'll carry you to the next place of victory because he's a God of more than enough. Somebody with me? I hope you got something out of this message this morning. Every head bowed and every eye closed just for a moment. Maybe you're here this morning would say, Pastor, I want that relationship. I want to know Jesus like you're talking about. There comes a time even as Christians we have to reflect and look again and say, am I doing it right or Am I carrying the anointing on Knox cart? And we have to go back and reflect and get a fresh word from God. I have to do that quite regular. Maybe here this morning you don't know Jesus as your own personal Savior. Pastor, how do I know? How do I know? If you would die tonight, God forbid, but if you would die tonight, do you know you're going to heaven? If you don't know that, you can know it tonight, today. One more day, don't have to go by with you wondering. Do I have a home in heaven? You can settle that right now. Maybe you used to serve God. Maybe you used to walk in the victory of the Lord, but someone hurt you and wounded you. Maybe a family member, even a pastor, church member. And when you, when you stepped away from the presence of the church and you stepped away from the fellowship of the believers, you kind of lost that luster and that excitement. Maybe he's calling you home right now, saying it's time. Come home. Come home. 
If you're here this morning and you meet either one of those categories and you would say, Pastor, would you pray for me? Would you include me in that prayer? I'd like you to raise your hand right now and say, that's me, Pastor. You need, to, you need to renew your relationship with him. You need to be born again. Raise your hand. Stand with me, if you will, everybody in the house. Would my elders come forward, please? And Maybe there's somebody here that needs a healing in your body. Maybe there's somebody here that needs a fresh touch from the Lord. Maybe you're, you need somebody to pray that you're burdened with a loved one that's not saved or a friend that needs, excuse me, needs Jesus. This would be the time for you to come for two or three are gathered together in my name. Scripture says that if two or three shall agree touching any one thing it shall be done come and let these elders agree with you when I need prayer they're the ones I go to the altar's open we'll be closing in a few moments but maybe listen maybe you've been carrying some area of your, of your Christian life on an ox cart it's time to say Lord I want to handle this right I, I want to handle it right Worshippers in this house. Anybody would just worship God for a few moments like David did when he was bringing the ark back the second time. He knew things were right. He knew his heart was right. He knew he was handling God's power and presence right. Said he worshiped God and praised him with all his might. If you have a need, come. Jennifer come was going to pray for her, but they're doing, taking care of that right now. Jennifer's last service with us. She's going up to Carolina and be with her new husband. So praise God. Need to keep her lifted up. of Jehovah. service in just a moment.
reach out towards these and receive in prayer. Let's come in agreement for just a moment. Where two or three shall agree, 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 touching any one thing. It shall be done. Receive the word this morning. Hallelujah. Bringing, bringing the ark back into the presence, into the house. The glory and the presence of God is in this house. We want to keep it here. Amen. We want to keep it here. We want to keep it here. Amen. Hallelujah. Mr. Howard, come on up here and dismiss us in prayer, would you please? Praise God. Have a great afternoon. Have some dinner. Get a nap. How many of you take naps on Sunday afternoon? Oh, good. God bless all you nappers. Hallelujah. Bless you. Bless you. <laughs> Get a good nap. Come back at 6 o'clock tonight. Louis Capdeville will be here, and he'll be a blessing to us. Praise God.